Africa. I feel like Galatians is the after romance. It was much more emphasized. Whatever was said in romance was much more emphasized. And it's good that we read romance before reading Galatians. And to an extent, I feel like when Paul was writing Galatians, he was writing it because he was like, didn't you people hear what I said in romance? Like, he was, I feel like he, he had it, he was a bit angry when you read some parts of romance. I mean, some parts of Galatians, rather, he was a bit much more. It's just like when you have said something twice, you still never hear you. You're like, ah, I should break your head open and put it inside. Like, that's just how he was in Galatians, you know. Justin even said, oh, you foolish Galatians and things like that. He was just really upset because he has said it time after time after time that it's not by law, it's not by law, it's not by law, but it is by grace and faith. So now we're just going to walk through the chapters in Galatians 6. So I'll read it. It's 18 chapters, so I'm going to read it in the in like dividing Galatians in the 18 into equal parts. I put there. Yeah, I'm here. Ah. So this is how it feels when someone will just be talking, talking, not be hearing anything. <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> don't feel like you. only you, only you, you are talking to yourself. No, I'm listening to you now. Okay. Um, so. Hmm. So let's do, we'll do six each, six each till we get, so six verses till we get to the last part. So we do from verse one to six, then from six to 12. Yeah, and then we'll do like that. So does anyone want to read first? Let me go. Okay. Six yeah. From one to six. You live in translation. NLT. Mm -hmm. Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. Mm -hmm. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's body and in this way, obey the law of Christ. If you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. Pay careful attention to your own work, for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. Those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers sharing all good things with them. Amen. Amen. So for, for, I don't know, for a very good reason, anytime I'm reading the Bible, I think it's Pastor Oro's voice I hear when she's like, read it in, in parts. Like she'll tell you, I think the part I remember was when she said, um, I don't know, I can't remember the part, but she was like, and Jesus, went, and after 14 days, Jesus went somewhere, somewhere. And she was like, so there was actually a 14 days. So like, I'm just trying to make emphasis to how you should pay attention to every word in the Bible. You should not just read it like a story. So we'll take from verse one. It says, dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help the person back onto the right path. So it just means that, it's all right. Does anyone have anything to say before I say something? We'll see while listening. We'll learn. So it just means that, like, the Bible is trying to make us understand that, like it or not, in our journey of faith, there are always going to be people who are still struggling to overcome sin, temptation. There are still people who are who don't have like firm faith in just understanding that they are supposed to be like the righteousness of God, Christ, God in Christ Jesus. They don't have that. It's just much more difficult for them to get to that place yet. Sometimes even ourselves do we fail, right? So you just trying to say that if another believer or even if your friend or somebody 
does something is just coming from that do not be judgmental part rather you should try to help that person overcome that sin try to fight the sin and not the person because i think I, what made me say this was i was watching a video of i think a girl got pregnant or something something and the bomiji was like you're yeah, rich you're a devil you're yeah, this you're yeah, that that i don't know but she had another friend who told her that okay this sin you can overcome this sin you need to like just come to god and just tell god that you are sorry like god is going to help you carry the child and do things like that so they are just two different perspectives there's that judgmental part and then there's that part of you trying to help that person deliberately to overcome the sin now some people when you say help now that's when they now remind you every time that oh you know that if you go to some so place yes like you can do all of that but you should everything that you're using to help the person should be based on the healing the leading of the spirit of god and he also says that when you are helping people to overcome their sins and their temptation you should be careful not to because anything the bible is telling you is telling you that it is possible for you to be involved in that sin by yourself but you should just try so be careful. Don't get yourself too involved in that person that the person begins to rub off on you. If you're helping the person, help the person from a distance, but make sure you help. It now says, and be, um, share each other's body and in this way, obey the law of Christ. And I said in NIV, it says, carry each other's body and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. So as Christians and as believers, we are supposed to, carry the burdens of other people like i know there's a lot of in fact self-love is a good agenda right that's a very good agenda but the the self-love agenda that they're pushing with so much agitation is against the will of christ where you just want to think about yourself alone you don't care about your neighbors you don't know we as christians are supposed to be concerned about our neighbors if your neighbor is in distress or something you should be that person that brings light and life into someone's life. Then it now goes ahead to say, if you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. So many times we Christians, we feel like we are overly Christians or we can't relate with the Gentiles or this person is a, for lack of better words, prostitute or this person does this, this person does that. I cannot associate myself with those kind of you're not that important, like, you're not that, you're not that important like that. You should be able to, like, humble yourself to help people. You should be able to be deliberate about helping people and just be humble, you know, when you are relating with people who are going through some form, through overcoming sin themselves. So the first thing is do not be judgmental. The first thing is when you're helping, the, the second thing is when you're helping the person, try to to not get involved in whatever that person is doing the third thing is carry that person's burden just try to make it make the load lighter for the person and you cannot do it by yourself it's through the help of the holy spirit and the fourth thing is don't and make sure that you don't feel like oh this i'm way better than this person so moving forward to verse five um no okay let me read from nlt that's where i understood this one it says pay pay careful attention to your own work for for then you will get satisfaction of a job well done and you wouldn't need to compare yourself to another to anyone else so i was just wondering hello mr paul how did we get here i thought we we're talking about helping people so how are we here right now but it still doesn't take the message out of context he's still trying to tell us that in whatever thing we are doing in life, we should all focus on the fact that our journey with God is much more personal than it is a a Christian religion or whatever. It is it is far from it being Christian. It's a you and God thing. So you should try not to pay attention to what other people are thinking or you should just, rather, you should always Focus on you and focus on what God is saying. Don't compare yourself to what's happening in that person's life. Don't be envious or wish to want to wish. I mean, wish to want somebody else's life. Rather, I'm still wondering why Paul wrote this thing in this text because it's not aligning to the upper side. Oh, I don't know. So it's for this Spirit that was directing him. If anybody has like 
maybe a way we can join it and just share more light on that. Are we still in this place? Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, it says, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. So there are some times where people are um, like, you won't, like, I think I was asking Kevin one time, like, is it okay to not be interested in politics? Like, and he's like, yeah, it's okay to not be interested. It's okay to be interested in what God said you should be interested in. And that really made sense to me because because I'm not interested in politics. If I see someone talking about the economy, talking about this, talking about that, I won't be envious because I know that that's not my calling. That's not where God is calling me to. That's not, you know, sometimes it's really nice to see people talk about vast um, vast um, literatures or vast knowledge of different things is good but as long as that's not what your calling is it's better you just follow what God is saying you should do and not be envious of people or compare yourself to anyone else so now for verse 5 it says are we following yeah I'm here therefore each one should carry his own load so that's NIV or NLT said, for we are each responsible of for our own conduct. So now, um, when I saw this part too, so when it says, do not compare yourself to anyone else, for we are each responsible for our own conduct. Well, that I think that um, I don't know. I've seen something like that in one part of the Bible too. But I can't really remember right now. So for everything you do in life, you have someone to answer to at the end of life. So you can't say, oh, <clears throat> um, this person was doing it. This brother was doing it. That's why I'm doing my no. Everyone has their own race. Everyone has their own. Their, everyone will answer to God differently. If you go heaven now, if you see, uh, maybe, I don't know how they say it. See, they say maybe we'll see each other and remember. But imagine we see each other and don't remember. Then it's, it's true that everyone is answering their father's name because you can't even remember what Bemi said or what another person said. All you just remember is your own. If God say, oh yeah, let's open your book of remembrance. You know, it's your own life. So what am I trying to say? For every decision you make, be deliberate. And remember that the Bible says, whatever we do, we should do it to the glory of God. Whatever you do, whatever thing you think or whatever it is, be deliberate about it and make sure and know that for every action I have taken today, I have someone to answer to. So that way, I feel like it puts you on the right track because if you want to do good, you know that you're answering to God for doing good. If you now put do bad, you know that at the end of the day, you answer to God for doing bad. But we are all responsible for our own conduct. So it now says, those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers sharing all good things with them. So this part, I do understand it. NIV says, anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with, with his instructor. I, I don't know what this context is. I was trying to think about it, but I couldn't get it. Are they trying to tell us that if maybe you receive a word from the Bible? And I mean, that's why Bible study is here, right? So that we can all think together so if anyone has like something to say about verse 6 and verse 4 more light on verse 6 and verse 4 so you should tell me but i'm really not sure about verse 6 let me read it in another version and see if it becomes simplified or something Okay, I'm really not sure. Let me have anything to say about verse six. It's straightforward now. What is it saying? I don't need context, but it's straightforward now. It's not dumb. Look at it now. Those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers. Okay, why don't you understand? Oh, I think it, this is honor. Like, for it's like honor people who have like, yeah, this is like honor. 
for you to like <laughs> let me say what don't you understand <laughs> Kevin please <laughs> so this is like honor for you to like honor your men of God your women of God people that have made impacts in your life like uh, honor can't be really underrated honor them you know and things like that so now let's read from verse 7 to 12 I think that's another oh, yeah. Paul said the same thing mm-hmm. in his. So, this is the last part of the letter to who in Galicia was. Mm-hmm. Paul said the same thing in the last chapter of Hebrews. Just thought about it. I know I've seen this thing before. All right, let's continue. Why is it in the last chapter? I feel like it just maybe the like last instructions. So, mm-hmm. so, what I think the last chapters are. Uh, sometimes, yeah, I finish addressing what I want to address. So, but yeah, this... this is the instruction for this. This is the instruction for this. this is, so it almost seems like they are separate instructions sometimes. But I cannot conclude because you later gonna find out that ah, it's you that did not know how it linked. It actually uh-huh. linked. Yeah. It's like proverbs. When you're reading proverbs, some part does not look like the link. And you will not go somewhere and they will preach you. Now like ah, I didn't know that link like this. So. Mm, that's true. So now let's read seven to twelve. It says, "Do not be deceived." Okay, let's do NLT. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Mm. You see why we need to. They, this explains the whole verse five that says we are each responsible for our own conduct. So whatever you do you are going to reap it so karma is in the bible it's safe to say that karma is in the bible you no, open... no, no, you just conclude now <laughs> no, it's I don't... safe to say you, you conclude no see you know why you can't conclude that mm. so god will not finish reading it for you scripture says not being misled you cannot mm. mock the justice of god you have this whatever you plant mm. those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature we have this what decay and death from the sinful nature but those who lead to spirit, spirit to have everlasting life from the spirit so let's not get tired of what is doing or well doing at the right time we'll reap the harvest of the blessings we do not give up therefore whenever we have the opportunity we should do good to everyone especially to those in the family of faith you look at 10 mm-hmm. and from the beginning to the end itself because i want to say 10 and 6 it's talking about doing good helping people in the body you know and all of that. So it started with, with the part we explain it. I wish you help over our, our, our brothers over, mm. if they overcome by sin. I wish you share in their body and nothing for too important. And then he now also told us, you know, we should pay careful attention to what we do. And I think we should also honor people that have taught us the word. Then 10 now tells us, therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially those in the family of faith. But in between 10 and 6 is do not be mock. If you sow to the flesh, you reap of the flesh corruption. If you sow to the spirit, you reap of the spirit eternal life. So see, mm-hmm. whether it's sowing of money or sowing of actions or whatever you sow, if you sow from the motivation of the flesh, you reap death. If you sow from the leadership of the spirit, you, live, you reap eternal life. So I think we had a conversation. And I have I've pon- I pondered it of, on this and I said pond- pondering it recently. There was people that pondering on it. I, I said this particular thing like two or three messages ago, two or three days ago. But I was thinking about it in 2023. Are you sure the giving we are not giving in church? No, I'm not saying you should not give. Please do not stop giving because I'm saying this. I give. So what I was checking is, are you sure I'm not giving God because I want God to bless me? Uh-huh. And you, anybody can say whatever they want to say. But I do not believe that, that that should be the motivation of giving giving in church. Mm. I do not believe it. Scripture says seek first the kingdom of God and his righteous and everything added. Scripture does not say seek first the kingdom of God so that everything will be added. Mm. It's out of love and desire for God's kingdom to advance. And understanding that your provision is of God. And God gave, gave you so God owns it. You're only a steward that keeps you giving. Not so that God will bless you. So will God bless you when you give? Yes. Scripture says uh, turning around something, something measure, 
Yeah. Uh, you know that scripture now. Mm -hmm. Shaking. Shaking. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But that that should not be the motivation. Because if that is the motivation, you are sowing to the flesh. And you will of the flesh reap corruption. So even if you more money comes from your giving, what it has done is that strengthened your fleshly motivation or your fleshly thought process that giving God gives you back. Yeah. So every time you give, even when God is telling you to give, because God wants, even when you are led by the Spirit to give, your your soul is appreciated that ah God will bless me. Oh. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you sometimes and people have told I've, I've, I think Pastor Tuko was talking about this thing. So the story about how he went somewhere. See, so sick. He so sick. Did not see Shinbang. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Is the mercy of God." This particular thing I'm talking about. You see my head. This conversation from this particular um, what I'm what I'm telling you right now. You see my head from the mercy of God that the thing did not profit him. Why? If he, if he had sold, I think he sold, I know he's, I don't know, I might be as assuming, but I know he sold maybe he sold a good amount of money at that, at that time. If he had sold that money and the money came maybe 10, 10%, 10 or 10 fold, mm. do you know what he would have built? Do you know what he, you know what he would have built? He would have built a life around, ah, if I don't need money, I to give God 10K, God will give me 100K. If okay. you are in the flesh, you are perishing. That's what you are doing. But if you give from a place of love, from a place of understanding and revelation, not from a place so that God will bless you, your motives are purified and you, of it, you reap eternal life. Huh. So, even in the honor, people, the honor, so that they give anointing, you just don't know how God will hear for us because. I will not lie. When I say all this, it's not only people. All of us are, 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 are among. Because you hear these things from popular popular puppets. And sometimes what the preacher is saying is not what you're interpreting in your heart. So I'm always saying that what they are preaching is wrong. Sometimes they are saying something, your heart is just interpreting. Ah, I can just tap anointing. Ah, I can. So the reason why we carry gifts to men of God or to people is because we want anointing. Please don't be upset. <laughs> No, see my, my problem with that mindset, and God needs to help all of us. The problem with that mindset is is the anointing. Can you buy the anointing of God? Remember when that um false that guy that met Paul and said, Is it Peter? I can't remember in Acts. He said that how much should we give them? So that's Peter, Peter and somebody. Paul, I can't remember. How much should they give give them so that they can get the power to be able to give people the Holy Spirit? That he huh. said, Let your money perish with you. If we are carrying gifts, we're so going to give men of God. So that they give us anointing. Hmm? Uh -huh. We are saying that we can buy the anointing with money. Yeah. But does that mean that if you carry money to give a man of God by, by instruction of the Holy Spirit, anointing cannot come upon you? It can come upon you, but the motivation cannot be the motivation of anything God cannot be flesh. If you check the if you check the if you check the movement of God, eh, a lot across scripture, if the, the blessing that God promised Abraham was not money, oh. it was not, don't let anybody lie to you, it was no money, it wasn't. Paul told us that the blessing, the promise, there were, were two, the, I think the covenant, the, the blessing Paul told us was that um, uh, uh, there's the blessing, there's the promise, there's the covenant. The, the blessing was that all the nations of this earth were blessed by him. That was the coming of Christ through the seed of Abraham. Because Christ was the promise, not Isaac. If I'm not mistaken, there's promise, there's covenant. There's one particular one. Yes, Christ was the, the seed. Isaac was the promise. Christ was the seed. It was not seed, it was seed. So the blessings was through, through Abraham, through Abraham's seed, all the nations of the world will be blessed on the earth. That is, through the revelation of Christ and his death, all the nations of the world will come into the salvation of Christ and ultimately be transformed onto the image of God. So scripture says, Abraham was looking for a city with foundations whose builder and maker was God. Scripture spoke about all of them, that none of them, none of them were able to apprehend that which they were looking, after, looking for. So it means that the blessing, the thing that God promised them, 
They prospered on the earth, but the thing that God promised them was not the prosperity on the earth. So the journey of God, hmm? mm -hmm. a lot of times, when you walk with God, you prosper. And prosperity is peace, provision, and protection. When you walk with God, you prosper. But you're not supposed to walk with God because you want to prosper. Mm -hmm. So it's motivation. And that's where that's where we need to ask God to help us. Because you think you're okay today, you will not check and that's it. Why? Sometimes the reason why you are praying is because you want God to give you anointing so that people can, so that people can hear that you are a healing minister. People came into these things. People genuinely love God, genuinely fellowship with God. You are really interested in God and you know carrying out the kingdom of the things of God on the earth, and then the anointing came and they were healing people. But now our generation has changed it to we need to pray nine hours so that the anointing we can now have the anointing to move. What's, what's wrong with us? Every single there's there's nothing. I don't know. Are we still here? Yeah. And I'll end here. It almost seems like there's nothing. Anything that God starts in the spirit, only we we, we will carry it to the flesh. There's nothing that God do, does that will not look for a way to corrupt. Mm. What is pray 10 hours so that you can go and heal? This, I don't think this is that's not the foundations of that's not, that's, that's not the I'm not saying I'm not saying that you should not desire to heal the sick. But what why are you designed to heal this? So that you will know that your ministry has arrived. But because you are genuinely compassionate, scripture says that Jesus had compassion on them. That's why Jesus was healing. Had compassion on people. But our own is hard to people who know that our ministry, because you cannot be a minister that does not see he the sick and open blind eyes. You know, you cannot be a minister. If you want to serve God, you need to wear a particular. Honestly, this <laughs> because sometimes I so I will not lie, because I will not lie. I've heard these things and subconsciously you believe them. So God needs to okay, I'm sure. God needs to, God needs to re God needs to re. The cultures and uncultures because there's something we've we, we even heard it inside the church, and it's not because anybody is bad, it's because sometimes that's what all of us believe. But if you are checking it according to the way God operates in the Bible, you are wondering if these things really align to what God is pushing. So, I think it's basically about being led by the spirits, Let our motivation not be how we can, how our flesh can express itself, but how we can express, how we can be expressive. To the spirit of God. Amen. Um, thank you, baby, for that powerful contribution. Um, I think you've actually explained everything. Um, so let's read Paul's final advice. So Paul said, um, Notice what large letters I use as I write the closing words in my own handwriting. At this point, I wish that I actually saw what Paul's... <laughs> Maybe the answer to us. <laughs> Maybe. That's in my own handwriting. I like NLT because they really actually wrote that in bold letters. Yeah. yeah. So those who were trying to force you to be circumcised want to look good to others. They don't want to be persecuted for teaching that the cross alone can save hmm. but sorry those who are trying to force you to be circumcised want to look good to others they don't want to be persecuted for teaching that the cross of christ alone can save wait nrv says those who want to make a good impression outwardly are trying to compel you to be circumcised the only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. So I think I prefer it in NIV. So what is he trying to say? Like it says those who want to make a good impression. So sometimes whenever we are doing things, I think we should always constantly check ourselves and just try to check and see this thing I'm actually doing. I think I was having a a, a conversation with someone one time and I was just like there was a time when I had like a very Nigerian TikTok for a Christian page and we had about one K followers and things like that. It was growing fast. Almost one almost one thousand five hundred followers and it was growing. 
but at the time I just stopped to just check to see is this am I am I actually doing this for the likes and the followings and the comments because if it was the followings was growing if it was the likes and comments it was coming but is that actually what it is or am I just trying to make a good pretend uh, impression outwardly you know trying to compel people to I don't know what it is but at that time I stopped the whole TikTok thing because I just wanted to know for sure for sure if I'm doing these videos to get the likes or if that's who I am personally so now but there are some people that don't do that checking there's some people that get carried away by the religious things the practices the things of God like I was listening to something today he said don't get to don't get to um attached to the church that you forget to be attached to the lord so sometimes you just get attached to the ceremonies to the structure to the religion and start telling people oh this is how we do it in our church this is how and then you forget the way that the reason why christ died is to save you know and now a lot of people that, well, that even teach these things and say this is not what it is what it is is the savior not the lord not the structure they are now being the ones persecuted. So inside inside the persecution, there is persecution. Because there is the persecution of, oh, we are Christian. Then there's now the persecution of people that preach only the cross. The question is, which one are you in? Are you preaching the cross? Or are you preaching that, oh, follow this way. If you do A, B, C, D, you have reached heaven. But if you do A, B, C, means D, there's one comma, you finish just reach. We should always try to check ourselves because that way we become, I don't know, hypocrites. We become, we begin to teach things that are not of God. So we should not be like those people who try to compel. That's why I said people that compel you to be circumcised. Circumcision, check it now. If you're circumcised or not circumcised, it, it's like, it doesn't really matter to God. Right? That's just what has to do with your physical appearance. God doesn't really care if you're circumcised or not circumcised. He died for everyone. And when these people have realized it, so and that thing is, when you realize that, okay, I'm doing something wrong, are you ready to say, okay, no, I want to start preaching grace. I want to start preaching the cross. I want to start preaching salvation. I don't want to be preaching these laws and these policies anymore, that there's that part of it. So the other one says, um, as for me, I'm sorry. Um... And even those who advocate circumcision don't keep the whole law themselves. They only want you to be circumcised so that they can boast about it and claim you as their disciples. I was reading Galatians 5. So one thing one thing that Paul said was, if you start obeying the law, you must obey the law fully. So you yeah. cannot obey some part of the law. You must obey everything. So if you not obey some, you not obey some, you are, you are dying like, is a death sentence somehow. So if you so choose with ye who you shall serve. If you are following the law, you must follow it fully. You are following this other part, follow it fully. It says those who have advocates for circumcision don't keep this whole law themselves. That's all we're saying. That some people you will say, Oh, we must go to church, we must do this. Yeah, I'm not disputing any of those things. I'm just saying, like the the connection with Christ is beyond religious structures, it's about the heart. You may do be doing all these things and it's even in the Bible, they say, oh, get behind me, the lost sheep, all these things. It's also in the Bible. So you need to always check your heart to say, ah, am I envious? Am I this? So sometimes, I, even when my heart or my mind is just not in the right place, I just ask Holy Spirit, my mind is not here. Like, the right fruit of the Spirit that I'm supposed to be exhibiting or showing is not in my heart. I need you to, like, correct it and things like that. So one, one thing is being able to accept your errors. Another thing is, trying not to follow the law because if you start you must finish it and he says some people that even tell you to follow this law don't even keep to it because there's too much law how do you even how do you even do it you go they think this is the thing oh we need to do it there's a lot of things so it's, you just have to choose jesus because the like the way to jesus is the law covered and more i don't know people don't understand that if you are following Jesus, because this, this, the Bible said, I think in Galatians 5, that it says the Spirit is the one that guides you um to will and to do. No, 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 it's not that one. 
it's Galatians 5, the ending that says, let us tell the Holy Spirit to help us live daily or something like that. Let me look for it. I know I highlighted it. It says, since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit leading in every part of our lives. That's Galatians 5, verse um, 25. So the Spirit of God will definitely lead you to the righteousness that is even higher than the law. So the law, keep being following the law and following the procedures of the law is good. But there's a higher mandate that is that covers you over that law. So you should always just try to follow Christ. Paul emphasized it in this place a lot. And I feel like he was angry about overly emphasizing it. So he now says, as for me, may I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I think I missed something. They only want to be circumcised so that they can boast about it and claim. So he said, as for me, may I never boast about anything except cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interest in this world has been crucified. And the world's interest in me has also mm-hmm. died. That is so powerful. That is so, so powerful. It says the that it's um because of the cross of God, the world's the world has been no because of the cross, my interest in the world has been crucified. And the world's interest in me has, has also that is that is so powerful because your interest in the world, things of this world. I was having a conversation, these all these. Mm-mm. These these are not the things. They are, they are much more bigger things. That's why we need to check ourselves. Any investment, anything you are doing, is it really the will of? Is it of God, or is it just me chasing money? Is it just me chasing things? I think I'll never forget the conversation I had with Bemi one time. I wanted to go and do one work where Kevin said, ah, "That stress is that is that the will of God?" <laughs> I don't know if he still remembers, but he was, are you sure? Hey. Let's, in his words, let's not be carried away by the things of the world that you forget the will of God. But it's so true. Sometimes we can be overly so interested in, in the world that we forget that we are not of this world. So, But with Christ in you, with Christ helping you daily, your interest in the things of the world become, to, become crucified. And the world's interest in me is also going to die as well because... I mean, you're trying to preach the word. Nobody's going to be so happy with you. Like, the world is not going to crown you the king of trying to preach. It's not going to be possible because you are preaching things that is against the rules of the world. Do you understand? So, the, they just have, it's, it's, a, it's too, it's, I don't know. It doesn't stay together, not as South Pole. So, it doesn't matter. We have been circumcised or not what counts is whether we is that whether we have been trans hmm? what counts is whether we have been transformed into a new creation no it doesn't matter whether we have been circumcised or, or not what counts is whether we've been transformed into a new creation i think i liked niv it says neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything what counts is a new creation We should always get to that place where what matters to us as individuals daily is the fact that I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Like, I don't want to know, oh, I think that part of the Bible that says his mercies are new every morning was deliberate because that's supposed to give us a new, a a daily reminder that we are God's new creation. We are his, his he died for us. We are his precious jewels. We are his, of his own. And we don't need to be qualified. We don't need to be, we don't, there's no qualification. The Bible said that he died for your generations and generations and generations to come. So we already knew that the Gen Z, in fact, Gen Z, Z, I, whenever they are coming, they are going to come with their own kind of things. But he's still trying to say that nothing, you don't need to be qualified or anything. The Bible said if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you are a new creation. So we as Christians, as believers, should keep on preaching that to people, that it doesn't matter your race, your type, it doesn't matter how your sin is heavy, it doesn't matter whatever it is, you are a new creation, you are a newborn child to God, circumcised or not circumcised. No says, um, it said, may the peace and mercy of 
and mercy be upon you as you live by this principle. They are the new people of God. <laughs> peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, even the Israel of God. So he says, may God's peace and mercy be upon all who live by this principle. They are the new people of God. So I don't know if you remember earlier when I said that there's persecution is a persecution. So Paul knew that there, there will be people who will preach law and there will be people who will preach grace. There will be people who will preach the grace and the mercy of God. So he's telling you for as long as you have been able to re realize and God has revealed to you that it's not by all of these things, but rather just you tapping into the fact that you're a new creation is that you're going to, that you're a new, like you're a new, whoever, like if you're a group, if you're an individual, you're the newest child of God because there are going to be false teachers, there are going to be other people, but you as an individual, once you're able to unlock and understand, it may not be the easiest because there are still going to be, maybe you find yourself in a church. Someone said today that she has realized that church has its own, every church have their own tradition. And I, I was I was skeptical, like, I don't understand. And she made me understand that, okay, there are some churches that do praise before worship. There are some people that do worship before praise. That's already a structure. So once... There, there are some people that do offering before, before I don't know, preaching. There are those like systems and structures in different, different places. But he's just trying to tell us now that if you're able to unlock and know that this is not by all of these structures or these standards or this principle, it's just by you understanding that you are a new creation. And my, my, my emphasis is always, is always we preaching it back because we believers sometimes may find it hard to preach it back to people, telling them, oh, I realize this thing. There's this kind of fear or something. But let us be like Paul and preach it back aggressively, telling people that it's not by all these policies, but rather by by the grace. And that will make us new people of God. Now said, from now on, don't let anyone trouble me with these things, for I bear on my body the scars that show I belong to Jesus. So that's why I say that um Paul was talking about when Paul was talking to the Galatians, he was angry. But because of all his statements, like from today on, I don't stress me with this thing again. It's like I felt like that's how he sounded if it was to be Nigerian from Benin. That's how he that sounded. But like I mean that's how he'd have said it. I don't know what sounded is, but that's how he'd have said it. I could hear. Hello. Ah. Oh, I didn't know I was mute. I'm here. I'm listening. Yes, we are. You guys. So, um, I thought that that's how Paul would have said it. Like, if God was, if Paul was to be in a Nigerian, a do man, he'd have said, "Oh, you guys should not stress me. This one, tire me. I've over, I've over said this." I've said it in Romans, said it in Corinthians. <laughs> I've said it. So here, we're just trying to say from now on, let nobody trouble me with these things, things that he has already addressed. In fact, I feel like he, he in his mind, is like, if you have, if you not hear what I said to Romans, tell them they should give you their letters so you read it because I've overemphasized it. Because he said, I bear with me the body. I bear on my, I bear on my body the scars that show that I belong to Christ. That was his 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 own journey for persecution he was ready to he just had better things to focus on which is continue spreading the word and that's what i feel this was it was him continue spreading the word and just continue receiving the persecution for saying the truth because he, he could not keep addressing something he has addressed before hmm on the last mm -hmm. verse Dear brothers and sisters, dear, dear brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Amen. So, why is it not before they will say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God <laughs> be with you? But he said, be with your spirit. Mm, mm. Maybe because he understood that our bodies are just carriers of our spirits. It could be. To check what that version is. So yeah, we've done with um Galatians. Does anyone have anything to say? 
about Galatians 6, just add Galatians 6, just to add something about to it. If not, we'll just pray and just say that God. So, but let's run through. So, number one, we should try to help our brothers and sisters if they're in sin. Number two, we should carry their, but no, we should try to help them. But after helping them, we should try to also make sure that you don't conform to whatever it is that they're doing. Number three, you should carry the burden of others. If your friend is going through a lot of things and you know that you can help, you know that you have the capacity, please help them. Because a lot of people are carrying a lot of things. People are suicidal. Please help the person. Please. Even if you don't, because I think one thing I realized myself is I like helping people. I, I don't know. I realized it recently of how much I like helping. Especially if it's in my best or my if it's something I can do, I will help you. But if it's something I'll stress. Somebody told me in case I'm looking for help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just it could be anything. I I may not be able to solve it, but I may just know somebody that knows how to do it. You know, but that's what we should always do. Just always ask and carry people's burden. People are going through a lot, and don't ever think highly of yourself and say, "Oh no, I cannot associate with this person. I cannot associate." No. Galatians 6 is telling us today that we should try ourselves best possible to not do that. We should not think of ourselves so highly important. And now says also we should make sure that we don't compare ourselves to anybody. Our race is heaven, is 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 um ourself and God. You don't need to compare yourself to anyone. Just pray and focus on what God is telling you to do. And at the same time, um men and women that have made impact in your life through any way try to always honor them you may not have to buy anything for them just saying thank you for doing this thank you for doing that thank you is enough you don't know how much thank you goes a long way to people when you help them always say thank you and now says um that you're gonna reap what we sow good bad evil and baby gave us more light on that about when we talk about reaping with god that is, we don't so money to God to reap. God is not Ponzi scheme, you know. That when we are doing things for God, we should do it from a place of we actually want to do it for God, and not because we just know that if we are give God one k, will give me ten million k, whatever that is. But no. And then also what he wrote in in large letters, which was him talking about we not conforming to the laws, we not conforming to the policies. Rather, we should agree and not agree but we should de- um decide to follow grace and decide that we are a new creation and preach that to other people so yeah and paul finally said we should stop disturbing him with all our questions but sometimes the questions we even ask is, is we already know the answer we just want to say oh but brother paul said oh god we Christians, may God deliver us. Sometimes you already know the answer to that your question. You just want it to be, oh, let it be that someone else said it. And you know. But finally, let the Holy Spirit, let's go back to Galatians 5.25. I says, let the Holy Spirit guide our living, everything that concerns us. Yes. Hmm. I think I was sharing with someone this evening and I said I've been able to unlock the you know that part of the Bible that they say, shall we continue to sin Why grace abound? You know that question, they, they ask that, they always ask that question every time. I have good news for you. Hello, people. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the good news is I've been able to unlock the answer to that question. In fact, it was just the Holy Spirit that I just read it. It just said, Chidera, this is the answer to that question. So I'm going to share it. People say share. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not here to share. We say share. Share. Okay, good. So I think that was in Galatians um Galatians Hi. 5 13. So you know that place where it says should we continue to sin while grace abound? So Paul was actually telling us that like it or not, grace will abound. So whatever sin you sin, grace will abound. But now he says for in the in NLT. Galatians 5.13 says, For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. So your grace is going to abound if you sin, yes. But don't use that your grace that is going to abound 
to do sinful things, to satisfy your sinful things. Rather, use that your grace that is going to abound to what serve people and love people more. So meaning that your um, your grace is sufficient for me. When you hear that thing, they say your grace is sufficient for me. If you your the grace that God has given to you, you can use it to feed the hungry. You may not have money, but the grace of God upon your life can give you surplus. You know, there could be connection. You know how grace works. It's just it just blows your mind. Use your grace that you have been giving you. The grace is going to abound, but use that grace for positive. Every time when people say, shall we continue to sin that grace about, everybody just thinks about the sin. Why don't you people say, can we continue to righteous? Why is everybody always thinking about the sin, that sin part, and I say, ah, sin. The first sin that now comes to mind is fornication. The other one, now, you know, the Bible is not telling us that. You, that grace is going to abound for whatever sin you are sinning. But don't use that, your grace, to satisfy sin. Rather, Use that your grace to satisfy the things of God. So I've shared, and I believe that if people will be able to share, does anyone agree or does anyone have extra things to say about this? My sharing. Thank you very much. So Thank much you for sharing for that. Giving us the light of that scripture. Mm. It was the HS Holy Spirit. So without further does anyone have anything to say again? It's like you will no longer pray for me. Oh. Like if I don't need prayers. Eh? I, can, I, I can feel it. <laughs> I'm not joking. What happened now? And so it's like I've offended the people that used to pray for me before I need to check up on them. <laughs> We're all praying for you. Does anyone... True. You, you, they do all those... God and my friends, bless them. <laughs> no, don't do that. Call my name. Name them. It's true. <laughs> I'll never forget, baby. Baby, say you know you don't have anything to prove. Ah, baby, I think I'll never actually forget you as a person. I don't know if I've said it, but I say ah, I miss you actually. Baby, will oh, say God bless. Say, don't say bless everybody. Say God help baby, help baby. <laughs> That's what he used to say. So we will we'll pray for you and say ah that. God should help you and provide for you and everything in between. But your own, your God's child, you know, he's your shepherd. And the Bible said, even before we ask, our Heavenly Father knows what we need. So you should be rest assured that what you need is granted. Okay. Does anyone have prayer requests? Mm. Should we go ahead and pray? Powerful. Sorry, Maju. No, I just said powerful. Uh, Maju. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so prayer request to my God to rekindle my hunger for Him. Mm. Yeah, that's my prayer request. Okay. My thirst for Him and my hunger for Him. Okay, so my prayer request will be that as we are all separating, that God in every place we find ourselves, our God is going to give us a new community of Christian believers, you know. He's going to put us in spaces where our fires will keep on burning. It's not that one that you say, oh, and my fire was hot in uni. No, we don't want that anymore. We want consistency in the growth. So we just pray. My prayer is that like, as everyone is going to different parts, and let God just begin to put people in different places. Let us begin to build communities. Some people are going to travel to where they are traveling and they are going to stay there for like so long as five, yeah. ten years. Yeah. Well, yeah. We just want to pray that God is going to create a com his own community for them and for every member of this Bible study, for every member of the CU, for everybody that God will create his own community for them there. And then I think I also pray that our fires keep burning. And as we transition, may God provide. I'm a living testimony of God's provision in transition because he has He has blown my mind. He has Thank really you. blown my mind. God has blown. In the space of one week, a lot has happened and is mind-blowing. You know, I just pray that God helps everyone. So let's just pray. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the grace of this Bible study this evening. 
Oh Lord, we ask that every word in Galatians 6 may it never be forgotten. May we always remember, oh God, every word that you have spoken to us in Galatians 6. I commit all the brethren here, Myra, Jerema, Kevin. We commit the larger family of the Colors of Hope. We commit to see you. We ask that you continue to fill their hearts with the Holy Spirit. That according to Galatians 5.25, that the Holy Spirit will guide our leading like our lives let our living let him guide every step and everything that we do god we pray for as we are transitioning and moving to new locations oh god may we never depart from you may our souls keep burning for you the uk is just a very i don't know but god may you give us a community we can't we can't by lord jesus alone we need people to help us. We need a community of firm believers that are willing to help us with evangelism and things like that. God, we ask that you begin to create a new community, draw people far and wide, people that will help us to continue burning our fires. Let them come on board, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. And at the end of the day, we'll be able to testify that, yes, after we left Cranfield, God gave us another Christian family people of god that are true to god that want to learn from god in the name of jesus lord we pray that as people are transitioning you provide for them all they need to transition everything they need to transition god as you have helped me help people help kevin help myowa help jirema help everyone modesty help azomta help christian everyone james david everybody that is Daniel, I don't know, sure now, but everyone just help us, so oh God. As we transition, it becomes easy because you are our shepherd, God. We know you will guide us. We know you will help us. We know you will protect us. We know that you are going to lead us, oh Lord, in the right path. And God, we ask, oh Lord, finally, that your goodness and your mercy, your goodness and your mercy, your mercy god we pray over this is the next time we're going to be having this bible study will be on monday where everyone has submitted god we just ask that in this final lap you show yourself strong help us oh god as we dot our eyes and cross the t's let god come let god reign in the name of jesus let the mercy have we missed it somewhere let favor and mercy mm -hmm. speak for us in the mighty name of jesus mm -hmm. amen and the amen. amen 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 let's share the grace may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the be with us. Amen. 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 Trolley goodness. I see so full of all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.